Hi, I'm Doug Lawson, Farm Manager at Gain and Ground. Um, as you know, it's been a very different season than we're used to. Um, we're really missing our volunteers. Um, and because we can't have volunteers, we wanted to give you guys a virtual tour of what's happening on the farm um, these early days of summer. Um, I'm here in the greenhouse. Um, and this is really the, the engine this, uh, behind the whole farm. This is where everything gets started. We start, you know, anywhere between 20 to 50 trays of uh, seedlings every week. Um, so that way we have a constant succession of harvest out in the field. Um, here are some of our cucumbers that will move into one of our hoop houses in mid-June, June 20, the week of June 22nd. Um, we're growing them in four inch pots compared to our small wind strip trays here. Um, so that the way they're bigger, more established when they get into the ground. Um, now we look at the hardening off tables. Um, and this is really the, the on deck uh, space for the farm. So these guys are waiting to bat next. Um, each week we're taking crops out of the greenhouse the week before they need to go in the ground. And that seven days gives them seven days to acclimate to rain or lack of rain, um, different temperatures rather than being in the controlled environment of the greenhouse. So next week we're gonna be planting three types of kale here and two types of Swiss chard along with many other things. Um, so that kind of gets us prepped for the next week. So now we're in hoop house one, our oldest hoop house, um, the house we built in 2014. We kind of think of it as the, the mecca, the mecca of the healthy soil here on the farm. Uh, this is where we experimented and started our no-till project back in 2014. And as you can see, the plants, the tomatoes are just thriving here in this environment. Um, today, Oliver and Anna are performing our, our monthly fertilization, so giving them the nutrients that they need to produce, you know, five to 6,000 pounds of tomatoes um, in this house alone uh, each season. So now we're in Hoop House 2, and we just wanted to show you a different trellising uh, system for these are for our cucumbers. Um, so these will climb up here, and we'll be able to harvest, you know, about double the amount of cucumbers that we would just letting them grow out in the field. Um, they won't be as susceptible to disease when they're laying on finding crops lying on the ground. Um, and we use this white plastic to reflect sunlight back into the canopy of the cucumber plant. And that just increases photosynthesis and gives us more growth and more yield in the end. These are some of our other structures, more low tech. Um, it's called Caterpillar Tunnel. We were able to start peas in here in very early in March compared to, you know, mid-April when we would get them into the field. And because of that, we've been harvesting, or we just started harvesting this week, um, and they're coming on strong. All those white flowers will produce a pea plant. Um, harvested about 50 pounds this morning, and they're delicious. West one, um, our spring brassicas, so broccoli to my right, cabbage to my left. Um, we just love these fields for their beauty, um, early season textures, uh, shadows that they create, how the plants hold the water, uh, and it will be a ton of cabbage to harvest and broccoli to harvest um, in and around the 4th of July, two weeks before and two weeks after. Uh, here we are in field south four. Um, it's mixed with caterpillar tunnels with some of our nightshades, cherry tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. Um, in between the caterpillar tunnels, um, our successions of carrots are working their way down the season. So to my right, carrots from early April. Um, right behind me, getting irrigated, is carrots from early May. And we've just finished harvesting a lettuce block to my left. That'll be June's carrots. Every month we seed six beds of carrots um, every four weeks, and that's about 250 to 300 pounds of carrots per bed. Um, so six beds last us about two weeks before we har move on to our next carrot harvest. Um, we don't, the fields are so tight around here, we don't bring the tractor into any of the fields. So all these beds were prepped uh, with only hand tools only. Um, 
We come in, we amend them based on our soil test. We put, we broad fork them. We add compost. Then we do a light um, cultivation of the top of the soil to incorporate our amendments and compost. And then we seed the carrots right into that crop. Um, with the use of silage tarps in between our cropping periods, we're able to keep weeds down so that the carrots look that nice behind us. Um, and as you can see, we're using overhead irrigation on carrots. That's to keep the whole soil, the whole bed and the soil moist. So that way we're not only giving water to the plants, that we're giving water to the microorganisms that we're protecting and enhancing and working with in the soil as well. And this field block is our lettuce block, um, starting three weeks ago. Three beds of lettuce per week, 750 heads per week. And we harvest 250 heads each harvest day, so Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday during each week when these are mature and ready to be harvested. And that's 250 heads for every harvest day. So each organization, four organizations come on each of those days, and that's about 60 heads per organization. So this is three more beds one week later, and now we're transitioning into our summer lettuce, which we went from head lettuce to Salanova lettuce, um, Johnny selected seeds lettuce. Um, and this head, led, head lettuce is very versatile, it can be harvested as a full head or be cut into a lettuce mix. So it gives us options and it performs much better as the heat starts to rise in the summertime. It won't have that bitterness and chance to bolt like head lettuce would so we can transition to Salanova for the next eight weeks and we'll be back to head lettuce in the fall. So here we are in one of our perennial hedgerows. Um, in the hedgerows we're planting all natives and beneficials. Um, and they all have a, a different purpose why they're being planted here on the farm. They're either attracting beneficials, deterring pests, um, housing snakes to go after voles and moles that try to eat our crops in the field. Uh, some of the plants fix nitrogen in the soil, and then in a few years, a lot of the plants will give us a harvest, blueberries, fruit trees uh, mixed. And we're filling any pocket of the farm that isn't used in cultivated crops. We're planting hedgerows around those fields to create diversity and abundance and beauty on the farm. Oh, let's be big, put the whole thing up. Where you're straight and true.